friends i am dr amdekar and you must have been watching the present series title one symptom but multiple systems in which the initial symptom could arise from very many possible symptoms and in this video i am going to talk about the psychological manifestations of systemic disorders friends psychology is a study of mind and behavior and what mind perceives or feels comes out in the form of behavior which is observable and hence the psychological manifestation are important and even they may mimic the primary mental health disorders but may have an underlying systemic cause and that's what we are going to discuss in this video we are all aware that systemic diseases and psychological manifestation have a very close bidirectional interrelation that many chronic diseases end up with psychological problems but what we are today going to discuss is a psychological behavioral abnormality as the initial symptom a sole symptom on first two three days before the rest of the syndrome evolves and the cause is not a primary health or mental disorder but it's a systemic disorder friends we all know that in an many disorders if there is a sudden change in the form of say an abnormal behavior like a drowsiness or irritability then we anticipate some complications but when an abnormal behavior is the sole presenting feature it's a big challenge for a clinician to diagnose the possible underlying cause i recall a newborn for example right at birth was put on the breast and after about 20 minutes of bonding with the mother when the baby was kept off the breast the baby looked hyper alert with wide eyes open and friend this is not a behavior of a normal newborn normal newborn is usually sleepy most of the time except the periods of breast feeding but this newborn looked hyper alert this is the abnormal behavior and this may of course indicate some problem with the brain function and this child had a stage 1 hie hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy we know that such behavioral problems come from a area in the brain which is subcortical limbic system and this limbic system is responsible for our many emotional or many behavioral issues and if that is the seat of the first affection then a behavior change is the only symptom and you need to be very alert about it well talking about the behavioral symptoms they can be uh, in the form of multiple ways of manifestation of course common or a lethargy or drowsiness or withdrawal from social environment or maybe irritability undue irritability or excessive crying but at times even something beyond like the delusions or an aggressive behavior or a self hurting behavior and so on and so forth so the form of a psychological manifestation may take into any of these kinds of behavioral symptoms and as i explained to you the hyper alert newborn is an abnormal behavior well there are many broad groups of disorders which cause such behavioral disturbance as the first initial symptom and one of the groups is an autoimmune disorders we know that if the autoimmune disorder affects the limbic system on day 1 or day 2 then may progress into affection of all other centers we may find it very challenging to pick up and i recall a child about 10 year old 
who suddenly started behaving abnormal, suddenly shouting, mood changes, and we did not know what we are dealing with. But looking at such behavior disturbance for no rhyme or reason, in an otherwise healthy child, when we go into the past history, we realize that he had a rheumatic fever few years ago, and this was a neuropsychiatric disorder following a post-streptococcal infection and referred to as PANDAS, and this is often reversible. Similar thing happened also in another older child who suddenly started with mood changes, sudden laughter, sudden crying, and going back to the past history, he had measles around one and a half years of his age, and we could finally confirm this to be a first symptom of an SSPE, a subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. So we know that such autoimmune disorders may occur even after years of insult and taking a note of a past history of significant disorders makes a sense when we are caught up with no clue of such a behavior disturbance. This is one group of autoimmune disorder. Another group is of course a metabolic disorder. And I recall a child who suddenly started behaving abnormally. He had delusions, sometimes a fear of something. He had mood changes. And clinically, there was hardly any positive finding. But very soon, he started with abnormal movements. And then we knew that this possibly was a metabolic disorder and was confirmed to be a Wilson's disease. Friends, Wilson disease can present often with a liver disorder but may also present with only a behavior disturbance. And that was the one we have to keep in mind when such a metabolic disorders comes in like that. Of course, there are many other metabolic disturbances which can cause a very subtle behavioral change. And one of the severe ones where a year old child suddenly started biting himself, self-hurting behavior was the only initial symptom and finally it was confirmed to be a leish nehan syndrome, a metabolic disorder and uh, subsequently all other symptomatology progresses and the diagnosis becomes very very simple. We are all aware how a hypocalcemic child may have some findings of irritability. Often it could be simply a tetany which is easy to manifest but the irritability could be the only symptom and you might have uh, any hypocalcemia coming up and same is true about hypernatremia. I recall a three month old child who was quite healthy till two months of age exclusively breastfed and suddenly started excessive crying. We were wondering what it was, a febrile, and then we picked up a serum sodium to be very high. The child was passing lot of urine but still was dehydrated, so was diagnosed as a diabetes insipidus and that was due to hypernatremia. If we miss this initial symptom, we might end up with seizure, coma and a permanent neurological damage. This is important to pick up as excessive irritability can be the only behavior change of multiple disorders. And I recall an infant of two months old who was excessively irritable right from birth. The baby will be only busy breastfeeding and that too intermittently crying but otherwise, except sleeping time, the baby always used to be crying and irritable. This is an indication of some brain damage and in the follow-up, we realized that he had a developmental delay. The manifestation could be just the irritability and therefore a lot of metabolic changes come up. But I recall a 12-year-old child 
who was suffering from a chronic liver disease, but he was stable. It was a compensated uh, liver disease, and suddenly he started with an antisocial behavior. In a family function, he went and slapped slapped few people. It was thought that he has developed a mental health disorder, but friends, this could be again an early hepatocellular failure because of hyperammonemia, hypoglycemia could change the behavior as the first sole symptom and therefore you have a big group of metabolic disorders. You may also have an endocrinal disorder like a hyperthyroidism who could present with very aggressive behavior for no rhyme or reason and if you are not very particular to look at a tachycardia or a fine tremors, you might miss a hyperthyroidism. And of course, we all know about how Kwashiorkor can come with uh, no interest in food or no interest in plane, but when disturbed becomes very irritable and that's the typical Kwashiorkor. But even a B12 and B complex disorders can also present with behavior disturbances and we know that how biotinidase, which is a biotin dependent metabolic disorder, would also present with some undue mood changes or a behavior changes, and one may not forget about such nutritional disorders as well. And finally, friends, even some drugs can cause a behavior change. We know the anti emetic drugs cause sudden behavior changes. We know steroids cause euphoria, and of course, the beta blockers and ACE inhibitors, a calcium channel inhibitors. So multiple such disorder behavioral problem may come out of such drugs as well. Well, in this video I wanted to just sensitize all of us that a sudden change of behavior as the only single symptom could really be a forerunner of some serious systemic disorder and we need to keep that in mind. I hope you are enjoying our videos and please share this information with as many as possible. Thank you very much.